Hey, what's good, Motive in Motion family? Welcome back to a new edition of the Marketing in Direct Response Style video about the sophistication of markets. I've um, got a few notes here. We're going to go over this sophistication of markets originally introduced by Godfather of Direct Response, Eugene Schwartz, in his legendary book, Breakthrough Advertising. So enjoy. Check that link in the description. Go to motiveinmotion.com for the latest blog post. That's an entire breakdown of strategy and copy and headlines and subheads that you can literally just go plug into your business, whatever your niche, whatever your market, whoever you're speaking to. And with this knowledge, you will be able to blast past your competition and destroy them because almost nobody understands this, almost nobody implements this, and they're stuck in the mud in the way that they're advertising. It's the same old stuff and it falls on deaf ears. So make sure the one you're the one that's leading, that you're the authority in the market. You can create a monopoly on a smaller market like I talked in my market domination video uh, a few weeks back here in the personal lesson sessions. And you can really get that strong structure that will get you more money, more happiness, more freedom in your business because you're actually implying things that are proven and you're reaping the benefits. For this video, I want you guys to understand that there's five major stages of sophistication of markets and in direct response, which is basically marketing to get a response, to get a sale, to get a customer, a client, something to call you, something, a opt-in, whatever, that's all about getting that direct response, getting the motive and motion, getting the um, actual action from someone to take who's just a prospect, turning them into a buyer and a loyal reader or buyer or consumer of your content or customer or increasing that customer lifetime value that's customer lifetime value and marketing in a nutshell for direct response because these days too many customers are numbed by this branding and this getting my name out there and this awareness and brand awareness and this and that and they forget the market really needs to solve their problems and the best way to do it is to bring something valuable to them and sell it to them so they can actually invest in themselves and invest in you and your brand instead of just you know reading another article or seeing another video and on another level I understand we're just going to the mindset real quick I understand that a lot of people struggle with this and the visualization they don't really understand how to make their dream a reality or they actually inherently kind of subconsciously stop themselves from doing it because they don't think they're worth it or they're valuable you know enough to do that so the way that I can get around this is that understanding and implementing and repeating and affirming this deep principle of ethically adding value and really helping people with your business because the way that you're going to get it done is selling someone something that they invest in because if you just give pe people free content all the time which is amazing to get your stuff out you know to market content and to make sales that's excellent marketing is great for the content marketing aspect that's excellent but just getting that out and doing that only you know every day and never selling anyone anything is really not efficient because those people don't get a chance to actually engage in you they don't get a chance to invest in their own business success, in their own mindset, in their own marketing capabilities, and they don't really put that effort for it because everything is free, and the things that we get for free, we don't really value them as much as the things we pay for, and the things that we invest in. We really take care of nice cars that we work to get. We take care of nice computers and headphones and all these apps and uh, you know Macs and whatever, iPods, iPhones, to if we're investing in them, we really take care of them, we clean them, we protect them with a case and a protector and a screen protector and whatever. We want them to be never damaged, never um, broken. So if we're not doing this with ourselves and we're not doing this with our own investment in ourselves of our book reading, our mindset, our, our training, our courses, our subconscious programming, then we're never getting better and we're never helping our customers. So in this little mindset switch you can do is a shift. You know, You can basically think I'm actually hurting my customers if I'm not selling them value. Um, it doesn't mean cram things down their throat in your business. It doesn't mean make them buy things or make them always pay for access. It just means that you should sell things that they want to complete their desires. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the five main stages of market sophistication. First introduced by Eugene Schwartz in his legendary book, as I said, Breakthrough Advertising. If you're going to only do 80-20 for marketing, especially direct response, read Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins and Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz. And both of those books are, one of them is really cheap, actually. Breakthrough Advertising is pretty expensive to get your hands on. 
So if you know somebody who has it already, maybe they can send it over or let you borrow it. Otherwise, again, it's that thing of investing in yourself so you're gonna learn these principles that are time-tested, proven over decades of direct response and also have founded the fundamentals for companies like Ogilvy and & Mather and advertising firms like Young & Rubicam that are still standing 100 plus years after the original creators have passed away or have created those things. The sophistication of markets is basically the level of awareness of your market and of your target prospect. So how, how aware are they of what you're doing? In other words, thus far, how many people have come before you? What are the claims that other brands and businesses have made in, way before you got into that market? What are the things they're used to hearing? What are the things they're tired of hearing? What unique ways can you approach them in ways that they're not sick of hearing yet? And maybe they haven't heard of it yet. Or maybe they haven't used your product in a certain way yet. You know, this is the way that sophistication of markets gets developed in your mind first and your approach starts in your mindset. Obviously, I talk about this all the time. It starts with your mindset and then approaches everything that you do and it changes all of your structure of your actions for business. So the very first level, I got some notes here, the very first level of market awareness and sophistication of markets is stage one. And stage one is they've never heard any of the claims that anyone else has made. There's no one in that market. It's a golden opportunity for you to jump in you can tell them anything that you want ethically again of course please use these things ethically there are certain principles and persuasion tactics that are being used on you every single day some of them for your best interest and most of them not so try to be the marketer that's not sleazy not super salesy not overhyped you know just give them value sell them things that they want but again if you're getting in the stage one market you're going to be super clear super direct tell them exactly what they want to hear help them get that desire fixed and healed right away in the most simple way in the simple most direct way that you can communicate it and also deliver it through your sales process and stage two stage two is basically where they've heard a few things before they know kind of what you sell they kind of know what you do a little bit so you're gonna to have to get a little bit more creative on this stage two because it's not as easy as stage one but not anywhere near as difficult as stage three four and five so stage two is where the market has heard a few claims or heard of things you know thrown at them in a certain ways like you know lose fat this way lose belly fat in two re you know three weeks or whatever or maybe you know get rich get business you know success immediately of course these people will say yeah okay I've heard that before you know it makes sense I'm sure that they're you know they're aware I'm sure that that's possible um, I'm sure that I could do that or maybe you know it depends on the level of their self-belief but of course they think people are out there selling that and they're able to learn ways to get business success or they can actually drop you know waistline inches off of their whole entire frame and get a lot skinnier you know whatever that claim is they've been there before you know they heard this and it's not super aware but they are aware that that exists because the first thing you got to get in the, in the funnel basically is the attention and you've got their attention a little bit basically you know that um, some marketers have been there before selling some certain things and that's that's you know it's good because it, it actually primes the way and slicks it a little bit and is also proving that competition is there so there's money to be made Stage three, this is where people are pretty aware of what you sell. They already know that kind of these claims are there in the market. You know, people have said this. They're kind of like, yeah, yeah, okay, I've heard this. I understand it. Yeah, yeah, like this might be a scam or kind of little red flags go right. You know, they understand that you've been there before or you're another marketer trying to sell them certain things and whatever. You know, they're like, okay with it. They understand that. They're recognizing that you're not the first one and they have, they're primed and tuned to the market claims that you're gonna make so you can't just be saying that one simple desire you know the second so the second stage basically you're gonna to want to amplify that desire and make that main desire stronger in the way that you um, implement and the way that you deliver the product and the value to them this third stage you can't just say that again because they've already heard these blown up claims of you know get 5,000 trees and in your garden off of these three seeds or something crazy and they're like yeah okay whatever I've heard that already it's too much it's too much now you can't just amplify again and again and say we're the best we're the best we really have it we can deliver it yada 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 they don't care that's too much for them at that point they just don't believe you anymore so what you're gonna need here is a mechanism and what's called a mechanism is the thing that is leveraging a certain point in your in your product so what does this specific thing do what does your product do in a certain way as in do you have a super powerful new soap that you've come out that um, you know floats stains right out of the white cloth or is your uh, program super effective because of the one teacher that you bring in who's an authority on the topic or whatever that is there has to be something there that is doing the work you 
you kind of blame it off. You put that responsibility on this mechanism and you say, this is what's doing the work. This is what, why it's different and why it's completely better because you just leverage that and that's the thing that's doing the work. It's not like we're great. It's not like our company is great and we do this. It's not like our process is great. They've heard all that before. They know that. It's a pretty aware market at stage three. So you're gonna wanna come in with a new mechanism that they never heard. Perhaps it's a new use for an old product or it's a new desire leveraged onto your product but you're wanting to channel that desire into your product from the mechanism that does the work to get the job done. And number four, this is a very aware market. The sophistication level is very high. They've heard it all before and they've already heard mechanisms from your competition. So they're like, okay, cool, you have one thing that goes, but what else can you do? What else can you do for me? You know, how is that mechanism gonna be better, stronger, faster? So this is all about enlarging and enhancing and creating a better mechanism and making that do the work for you even better. So in other words, how does that mechanism do the job even better? How does it do it more efficiently? How does it float more fat away from your body? How does it help you lose weight quicker? How does it help you get that sexy physique? How does it help your, you know, like I used in my uh, complete article on this site, where you can of course go in the link, how do those tiles stay together in that whole demonstration where scientists are just throwing it off this two-story building into cement or something, you know? completely random story, you know, basically a, an example that you can use for a headline, a body, a subhead, just to grasp the idea. And like I said, of course, check that entire article. It's way more in depth this, than this video and it'll give you a lot more background, a lot more actionable practice that you can use right now in your business. So make that mechanism a lot better, way quicker, way stronger, way faster, way smarter, way more intuitive, whatever that is. You're gonna have to do the exaggeration in an ethical way, in a truthful way, in a proven and a studied way show don't tell, right? About how that mechanism does better work. Number five, this is a very, very aware market. This is number five on the sophistication scale. They are all in, they have heard it all. They know all the things you're gonna throw at them. They've heard every claim, they've heard all these mechanisms. They've heard the mechanism of doing it better, faster and stronger, they've got it. They understand that. That is so much marketing material and advertising and strict uh, sales copy that really works and gets sales. They've, they've heard it all, they've seen it all, they've done it all, right? This is where you shift from mechanism to identification. And Eugene Schwartz says there's five main ways for obviously the sophistication, but there's two main ways for the identification. So the identification, you're either identifying with a character role or an achievement role. So you're either identifying with your product and with your desires channeled on from your product, you're channeling that main desire in a character role or an uh, achievement role. So this means who is the prospect for the character role? Are they a race car driver? Are they a pro MMA fighter? Are they a black belt in jujitsu? Are they whatever they want to be, you know, a rich businessman? Are they a CEO, drive a Mercedes? You know, they look real nice. Those are the target market, right? Of who they are now, who they want to be, and who you're helping them become with their product. And that leads me to the achievement, which is who do they want to be? Who do they want to be perceived at? Are they wearing a nice suit and tie? Are they wearing a three-piece suit that's $15,000 and a Rolex? Are they wearing, you know, just overalls and construction jeans because they're a working man? Are they blue collar, you know, whatever? Are they a doctor? They wanna be seen as having a nice practice, good advertising, whatever they are. How are you gonna help them get there and how are you gonna help them develop their identification role through the either character or achievement? And this is very important to shifting from mechanism to achievement. Almost nobody does this because they don't have the idea, they don't have this whole picture of these five levels of sophistication and awareness of markets. So once you do have them, you're gonna put them into your business, you're gonna make amazing amounts of money, 10 times more amounts of money because you'll actually know what you're doing, you'll actually know who you're speaking to beyond just market research and the demographic and the target that everybody throws up. This is all this old, tired out information. Everybody knows it, customer avatars, this and that, it's cool, empathy maps, it works. But they're not talking about the levels of sophistication which is, I don't know, this book, I think it was from the 40s or 50s, and scientific advertising was definitely from the early 20th century, like 1900, 1910. Those are such old direct response proven marketing principles, and I'm bringing them back, uncovering them up, brushing the dust off here for you, because these things have worked in my business, every single e-commerce business, anytime I do consulting with clients, anytime I do copywriting for my client, I'm making sure that this client gets a mass amount of value because of these old proven principles, and that's another way of how I differentiate myself when I'm selling myself to them. So it makes way more sense, it's way more effective, it's so much more useful and actionable, and nobody's doing it. It's direct response, it's not branding, it's not getting your name out there, it's not being seen on a billboard, it's not 
putting yourself in front of the people. It's not anything about that. Writing a new blog post, shooting a video, these are things that are means to an end, as in they're a means to your sale, to your end profitability, to your sales funnel, to your entire customer acquisition, to your lifetime value of a customer, and all these things that make a business. For a much more in-depth study of how to implement these sophistication levels of markets, make sure to check the link below. It's the entire blog post that's way more in-depth, over 2,000 words in there of just straight actionable strategy that you can use in your business today to tune your marketing, tune who you're listening to, tune who you're speaking back to, and make such a larger impact on your customers, your clients, and your whole market with the proven direct response fundamentals of sophistication to markets. So thank you Motive Emotion family for tuning into this. This is Evan with MotiveEmotion.com. Take it easy.